Sabbath School discussion. I hope you had a wonderful week. My name is Elder Charles Yard, and on my left here we have Elder Tadman. And on my right, okay, I want to welcome you to just start with us. We're just asking you that you take at least 30 minutes with us as we share and discuss God's word. We have a wonderful lesson before us this week. In fact, this quarter it talks about it talks about in the crucibles with Christ. And I want you, I want you to realize one thing before we go any further that in your crucibles, Christ is there with you. No matter what you are going through, Christ is there with you. And we are on the fifth lesson, it talks about extreme heat. Extreme heat. And as we look at our memory verse, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make it his soul, when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And this is a fulfillment of Genesis 3.15. Where God promised that when man sinned, he would send a deliverer. And here Isaiah is prophesying that Christ will be bruised for our sin. And, and, and I love the, the ending of that verse. Where it says that, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It means to say that all those who accept Christ the Lord will find pleasure in them. And it's only because of the death of Christ that we can find pleasure in eternal life. As we continue, Sabbath introduction talks about <coughs> C.S. Lewis. While his wife was dying, he says, listen to what he wrote. Not that I am, I think, in much danger of ceasing to believe in God. The real danger is of coming to believe such dreadful things about him. The conclusion I dread is not so there is no God after all, but so this is what God really is like. And I can imagine when we go through our trials, when we go through a fiery furnace, how do we look at God? This is what this week's lesson is talking about. How do we respond when we face our crucibles? Okay, let's go to Sunday section. And I love Sunday section. I, I love Sunday section because here is the story of Abraham. God promised Abraham that he would have a son. And because, of, and through that son Isaac, the whole world will be blessed. Through Abraham, a lot of nations will arise. But here now in chapter 22 of Genesis, we see where God called Abraham and tell Abraham, arise, take your son, your only son, Remember now, Abraham had two sons at that time. But here God is telling him, take your son, your only son. It means to say, his only son, whom the promise was coming through. I want you to understand that the only son, whom the promise was coming through, Isaac. And carry him to Mount Moriah and offer him as an offering unto the Lord. I could imagine Abraham. You know, as we look at it, we could think that Abraham could have given up, could have doubt it was God. But he knew God's voice. He knew when God spoke to him. Okay? And as, as we see Abraham obeying the voice of God, Abraham taking Isaac. And at that time, if you study the story carefully, Isaac was a young man. Maybe around 17 to 20. Anyway. He could have overpowered his father. But he believed in God also. And he was obedient to his father. Going up Mount Moriah, Abraham didn't even tell Sarah what God told her, what God told him. Abraham didn't even tell Sarah anything. He just got up early in the morning, took two young guys with him, with Isaac, and they went up. After before they reached up to Mount Moriah, Abraham tell the two young men to stay there and he and Isaac went up and Isaac asked him the question he said father we have the match we have the stick we have the knife but where is the offering and Abraham says the Lord will provide the Lord will provide I want us to realize that no matter what we are going through God will always provide for us there's a, a quotation in, in, on Sunday section. I want to read it for you. 
this was just a test. God never intended for Abraham to kill his son. I want us to listen to this point, right? This point here. It says, this highlights something very important about the way God, about the way, this highlights something very important about the way God sometimes work. God may ask us to do something. He never intend us. Listen to it. He never intends for us to, to complete. He may ask us to go somewhere he never intends for us to arrive at. What is important is not necessarily the end, but what we learn as we reshape by his process. I love that. I really love that. Sometimes God leads us through dark trails, dark trials. It's just for us to experience that we need to depend wholly and solely upon God. This is telling us that we should trust God where we cannot trace him. I know all of us have experienced that. That we allow God to take our hands and lead us. We don't know where we'll end up. But once we put our hand in God's hand, we are assured that we are on sea solid ground. And I love, I love the story with Isaac. Isaac could have overpowered his father. He was a young man. Abraham was about 117 to 120 years. Okay? But Isaac trusted his father. And then when God says, when, I, when Abraham told Isaac that the Lord will provide a lamb. I love that. Because way down in John, in the New Testament, we hear that question answer. Way when Isaac asked that question, way in Genesis, where is the lamb? We hear John saying in John 1 29, Behold the Lamb of God, which take it away the sins of the world. Now that test, remember, I think it's John 8 56. Could you read that? John 8 56. I want us to look at something here very important. John 8, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my days. And he, and when he saw it, he was glad. You ever think about that? When God, when Abraham saw the, the, the lamb in the ticket, right? He foresaw what God would do for us. That is where he realized that the test was really showing that one day God would send his son. It would hurt the father, but God would send his son to die for us. Abraham rejoiced because he realized that salvation will come only through God's son and God's son alone. Amen. I hope we had. So, you have a comment? Yeah. Abraham going through the process. He was actually experiencing, experiencing what God would be going through. Yeah. Same process. As he gave his son to die. Amen. True. And if the other brother, a very important point is that if he was being disobedient, then he would not gain that experience that God would be going through. And just by he able to offer up his son, and it was just showing that Jesus one day would also give his life willingly for us, just as Isaac did. Amen. I also Amen. wanted to um deal on the question about question why did um if god knows everything what was the point of him having abraham to offer up his son as a sacrifice and i came to a conclusion that god does know everything and that in order for us to know god god has to reveal himself as a trustworthy god so god put abraham to the test but um, Abraham, he, he um, took Abraham there, but he didn't intend for Abraham true. to kill his son. Yeah, true. So now he revealed himself unto Abraham, his promise. You know, because yeah. you can just imagine Abraham going to kill the son that God gave him that he'd been waiting so long. But Abraham stayed faithful to God because Abraham knew God and knew God's voice. Amen. That's it. And at the end of the road, remember, always remember that. Is a process, but it's not where you end up. It's how you react right. when you when when you're in a crucible with God. Okay.
when you're in the heat. Okay, remember the topic is extreme heat. In the heat. Okay, we go on to Monday. Monday talks about we word Israel, and we have a wonderful story. It's the story of Hosea. Hosea was a young man growing up in church. Right? I mean, let's say he was single, he was dedicated to God, and here God tell him to take to take a wife from who? Um, from the whole house. From the whole house. A young preacher in the church, you know. God tell him to take a wife from the whole house. But God really wasn't interested. The story about the story of Jose is a condition of God's people and him. This lesson is not for Israel anymore. It's for us. And our condition, right? God is telling us today that we are way far away from where, he, where we need to be. Right? We are an adulterous nation. In fact, when Jose married Goma, the second child, the name of the child means what? Not mine. God was telling Israel that you, you, you are going, you're going a whoring. Right? What you are doing, you don't even belong to me anymore. Okay? And as we study the book of Jose, we realize that that is our condition. God wants to show us our real condition. But he doesn't want to leave us there. He wants us, he wants to pull us out. He wants to pull us out and show, give us something that he could be a pr pr proud of. Let's read verse 10, Hosea 2.10. It, it brings out a, a point here. Hosea 2.10. It says here that I will, I, I, and now I will discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and no more, and none shall deliver her out of my hand. That's Hosea two ten. It says say that you have wandered away from God. That Goma had gone so far, okay, that when you read verse verses the eight and nine for she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold which they prepared for Baal. Therefore I'll return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in this in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. What God is saying here is that He provided everything for us. Everything, the corn, the wheat, the wine, everything for us. And yet we are taking it to worship false idol. To worship false God. Sorry. To worship false God. That is what God is telling us here. That he will take it away. He will take it away. He will show us that there is no hope for us. There is no hope if we continue in that sinful manner. If we continue that trend, God is saying that we need to turn around. God is saying to us this morning that the wayward Israel, he has no connection with wayward Israel. Once we turn around and come to him, okay, then even though no matter how far we go, God tells Jose to go and buy back Goma. And she was changed. I pray this, to, this, morning, this morning as we realize our condition, as we realize our condition, that we would change our life as God wants us to. God has everything to offer us that will be pleasing with us. If we accept Christ, it will be a peace that passes all understanding. Okay, as a hand over to. Yeah. I don't get a comment. Yeah, okay. Okay, and we see here that Hosea, and as uh, Ella Charles was member to the church, you see that God is actually give them both sides. It's like saying, if you are obedient, then you're going to prosper. But if you are disobedient, then destruction will follow you. Yes. Yeah, sure. I think one thing I'm reiterating to us in Monday's lesson is that God is saying that, you know what, if destruction follows you, then no one really can rescue you out of my hand. True. So then why you choose to go down that part of destruction that no one would be able to help you? So he is telling them, uh, giving them the opportunity to come back before he got to use vengeance on them. And in the end, they would have to come back. And if he don't bring them back, then it's just the to destruction. But he's telling us as a church is that it doesn't make any sense that, like, say, you leave the church because someone else, someone says something on you. Because in the end, you would have to come back. Some come back alive and some come back dead. Hmm. In the end. Yeah. So it just makes sure that 
when we are serving God, we serve God wholeheartedly and give God the best. And only that's what God requires. It says, first, we risk not recognizing that God is at work. When Israel went through such hard and painful experiences, it might have been hard for them to recognize that their God was working for their salvation. When our path is blocked by sharp thorns, oh, we are walled in so that we don't know where, where we are going. Is this God? When our basic necessity disappears, oh, we are embarrassed. Could our Father be in the middle of it all? The truth is that whatever we feel, God is always working to bring us to repentance because he loves us very much. Second, we risk misunderstanding God when he's at work. We may recognize that God is at work, but we, we don't like what he's doing. While we are feeling hurt and embarrassed, it is easy to blame God for being cruel, for not, intervene, for not intervening, or for not caring. But God is always but, but God is always working to renew us through his covenant of love. I love that. So no matter what you are going through, I want us to recognize this morning, God is shaping us, shaping us for eternal life, for a heavenly home. There are some crucibles, there are some things that God needs to refine us from. So I, I pray that as we realize that we need to surrender our all to God, for us to get rid of these shortcomings, that we will allow God to purify us, to refine us. Okay, now we move on to um, Tuesday lesson, Surviving Through Worship. How do we survive through the heat when the flame is hot? Mm. That's kind of tough, ain't it? Yeah, but um, today let's deal with one man called Job. How Job, he survived through it all. He was in the middle of something that he didn't even know. And the devil came and took everything away from Job. Now, we all know the story of Job, what happened to him, his family, his whole entire um, children was taken away. And then came um, his possessions, and also his body went through a lot of torment. Now, that's a lot of heat there. But Job was a man of God, and Job knew God. And Job always worshipped God. And not only did he worship God, he also made sacrifice for his children and his whole entire family. So when these crises came on to Job, Job, even though he did not understand it all, he stayed faithful to God because he knew his God. He knew that no matter what, he served a mighty God and a faithful God. So he knew he had to stay faithful because Job had a true relationship with the Heavenly Father. Before all of this came upon Job, Job had a true relationship with God. God prospered him a lot. And he was a very rich man. The Bible doesn't go into the detail of how wealthy Job was, but we all it gave some detail about how much flax he had and how much possession he had. So now all of a sudden everything is talking from Job. So you know when things like that hit us, we wonder what's going on and what's happening. Who's causing this? And sometimes we get a lot of afraid and we don't know which way to turn. But, you know, we always supposed to turn and to our God, the one that we know. That's why it's very important for you as a true believer as a Christian, as a God's a servant, for you to always look towards the God, the true living God. That's why you need to always stay in the Word of God, so that when you do get in the heat, just like 
the um, three Hebrew boys, you would acknowledge God no matter what, in life and in death. So now, there's a question of what caused it Job's suffering? What caused it Job's suffering? Okay? Well, we all know who permitted it. God permitted his suffering. Why? Because God knew um, Job. They had a relationship. So God is not going to put you in the heat unless he know that you will come out there um, shining. Okay, now we as um, Christians, true believers, we think that things going to be, we going to be safe and things going to be all right. But God didn't say that. God said we will go through the fire and we will go through water. But he also promised that he'll go through there with us. You know? Yeah, Elder. Um, I, yeah, as, as I look at that story, Dave, you know what I realize is that it's, it's, it's God that asks Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And, you know, when I, when I think about that, and Job it wasn't aware of the controversy that's go, going on with his life, you know. It's a, that's a behind the scene thing, right? And so it is with us today. You understand? I wonder if God could look down and say, have you considered my servant, Charles? I wonder if I'll be able to, you know, stand up as Job stood up. Because the Bible says that when Job lose everything, what Job did, he went and worshiped God. He said, naked I come, naked I go, blessed be the name of the Lord. I wonder how would we respond when we are going through crucibles. Right? Job, in all that Job lose, in all that Job passed through, right? He, he never forsake God. He never denied God's existence. He continued to trust God when he couldn't trace God. He held on to God. Sometimes he might go through crucibles and we tend to move away. Let go of God's hand. But Job did the opposite. He held on more tightly to God. Okay? In our worship, when we go through our dark trials, when, like, you know, I want to, to urge us to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yes, Ella. And we see here um, with Job, the author actually brought out three aspects of Job worship. Yeah. And you see that the worship, see, Job 21, we see here that three aspects of worship that help us to help in the anguish. First, Job accepted accept his helplessness yes, and recognized that he has no, no claim on anything. anything. Yes. Naked I come naked. from my mother's womb, and naked I'm going to depart. Second, Job acknowledged that God is still in total control. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave and the Lord take it away. Third, Job concluded by reassuring his belief the righteousness of God me, the name of the Lord be praised. So as we go through all crucibles and we understand that as the lesson points out that extreme heat Hmm. It actually tells us one thing. This is no joke. True. And we know we could compare the lesson. The, the lesson is compared to someone finding gold, and in order for for them to, them to see the pure gold, it must go through extreme fire. heat, yeah. the fire. And so God is putting us through the fire now, and so that we can come out as fine gold. And we realize that after this crucible. We always have an experience to share. True. And that's why John tells us is that the saints will overcome by the blood and the word of their testimony. And this testimony will be the experience that we go through in our day to day lives. Amen. Okay, Sunday lessons now. Wednesday. I mean, Wednesday lesson now. I'm sorry. Wednesday doesn't deal with surviving the heat through hope. Now, what hope do we have when we are in the heat? Huh? Well, that's why we need to read our Bible because in the Bible it has a lot of ex uh, men that went through the heat and they stayed faithful. One was Paul. 
all went to a lot. All right? All went to so much hardship. But, you know, um, it says that in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it says that, that we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raised the dead. Yes, Paul depended on God, okay? Because when you're going through so much uh, crucibles, right? You seem to lose, don't know which way you're going. And one thing about going through crucibles, it bring out um, endurance, okay? Yeah, it brings out endurance. When we go to crucibles, we suffer. And through suffering, it brings out sanctification. And sanctification can turn us to look inward. I mean, suffering turns us to look inward into ourselves. All right? And as we look inward into ourselves, we might find something that we have ignored. Okay? If God used suffering to develop us into better people. And the bottom line is that we suffer. We have, and when we suffer, we have an opportunity to grow in endurance. Just as Jesus. Jesus suffered, but he endured to the end. And as we suffer, we also experience going beyond our comfort zone. And that place, and that is the place of true growth. Endurance produce character. Suffering produce endurance. Endurance produce character. And character produce hope. And if you have hope, which we do in Jesus Christ, we should rejoice. Okay, God want us to minister. God want us to minister to minister through us to hurting people. So when we when we suffer, we are a good example that we could tell people of our suffering to give them hope. Because who feels it definitely knows it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, 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 yes, Ella. What I like about the story of Paul also, remember that while he was Saul, he was persecuting God's people. And he was struck down on the road to Damascus. And there God told Ananias, that Saul is a chosen vessel and he will suffer many affliction for me. God allows Saul to suffer affliction, okay? But I want us to realize that when in, in, in Saul's experiences, when he was given his testimony, he wasn't sorry for himself, you know. He had a joy given it. He had a joy. And I think it's Ephesians 2 verse 6 where it talks about he said he will be sitting in heavenly places yeah. right and at the time he, he was thinking about that he was in prison yeah. he was in prison so he was looking at the end of the road the hope that Paul was Paul had was the end of the road that is the hope he knew that even if he died because when he was when he was about to be executed what he said I have fought a good fight. I've kept Amen. the faith. No, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, with the, which the Lord Himself shall give me, and not me alone, but all those who look. That is what the hope Saul was looking at. Not this earthly thing, because he knew a better day is coming. That he knew that Christ promised in Matthew 28:20 20, that I will be with you always, even unto the end. He knew that Christ was with him. So he knew at the end of the road, he will et gain eternal life. So the crucibles was just minor matters for him. He had bigger plans. Yes, and then you realize that Paul, when you go into crucibles, you know who your friends really are. Yeah. And, you know, in Paul's case, you know, he, he also tells us that, you know, 
some of the folks that he was looking to help from mm -hmm. they really disappointed him because you know he concluded that he said he gets all a beating but he said also said that the worst beating that he received was from his own countrymen mm -hmm. which also tell us as a church that when you're going through your crucibles even at times the members who you might be looking for help to you might be looking for encouragement from they might turn in the opposite direction but however you should always have your hope and your firm grip on jesus true, christ true so even if the brethren let you down because of your relationship with christ you will always endure to the end and the bible tells us that he that endure to the end the same shall be saved amen, amen. okay as, as we go on to thursday we look at looking at extreme heat mm. and we see here that we're looking at I, uh, scripture is isaiah 43 1 to 7 and Isaiah is telling us that when we go to the water, he's going to be with us. And through the fire, they will not burn us. And just to imagine that you are going to serious crucible, serious affliction. And just to know that God is with you is enough. Amen, true. And we could make reference to the three Hebrew boys. Yeah. You know, they were placed in a fiery furnace and everyone around them was born down to the idol and they were giving up their hope because they know death was imminent for them and so we see that because they have their hope and they have their confidence in god they say you know what you know what um, nebuchadnezzar we're not even keen to answer you he said but if we choose if we choose to trust in we, we will really go and they know that god was with them and you know, because of their experience, you know, when Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the fiery furnace, you know, he observed something. He said, listen, I should three men in the furnace, but there's a fourth one. He said, listen, and the fourth one, do what? Look like the son of God. So he's just telling us that even through our, going through our crucibles, sometimes God just opened the path for us to go through. And then there are times when God actually goes through with us. You know, you could look at the children of Israel crossing the Red Sea. So I just make the part for them and they go to. But in the case of the three Hebrew boys, God actually went in the fire with, with them. them. Amen. And so we can see that as Christians, we don't need to be a fear, be fearful. We just need to have the hope and the confidence in God. And rest assured that once we believe, once we trust God, then God is going to carry us through all crucibles. And in the end, that's where we receive a testimony. And like Job, we can say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? You know, and you know, it's everything that he has is belongs to God. Naked he come and naked he's gonna return. And I think in the end, we just have to give God praise and worship him because that's what God deserves from us. Yeah. Our Amen. worship, and that's what he demands. And uh, what, okay. yeah, one thing I'd like to say about Thursday lesson was um, when it says, God, extreme heat is to destroy not us but our sins. Same true, right. yeah, because um, some people are. Uh, like literally living in sin every day mm. and the only way they could stop that sin or they're getting some extreme problem i mean very extreme problem mm. you know and that would burn out that sin and what what i like also about it is that god says i've called you by your name yeah. you belongs to me right. you belongs to me and he didn't say if you pass through the water, you know. He said, when you pass through the water, when you pass through the fire, God is saying that you will pass through fires. You will pass through flood. But I will be with you. I will be with you. The true Hebrew boys that were thrown, as I said here, the true Hebrew boys that were thrown into the fiery furnace, right? When Nebuchadnezzar looked down, they were tied, they were bound and thrown into the furnace. But when Nebuchadnezzar looked down. He saw them walking about in the fire. He saw them walking about. Which means they were loose. Which means the only thing that was Babylonian on them was the rope. Was the rope. And God burned out that rope. God burned out that rope. So if there is anything that is unlike God in our life, the fire that God has given us, or to burn it out. Amen. You get that point here? Yeah, yeah, the fire point. will burn it out. Just as it burned out the Babylonian ropes, right. what we are cherishing that is unlike God, 
God will show us that we need to get rid of it. Okay, and we know that the extreme heat is that our affliction. And we realize at times when we when we are sick, when we are on our back, then we have a chance to look up. Yes, sir. And so God allow us this crucible to come to us so, so that we can repent and we can have total dependency on him. Because when you when you go into this crucible, and when you have gone through, you realize that you know what? If it wasn't for the if it was for God, if it was for God mercies, you could not be alive. Because even when the doctors give up on you, when everyone give up on you, and you are here still speaking, uh, you should you should not be walking, because the doctors say that you should 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 be crippled. You know you might have cancer. The doctor give up on you. But when you realize that God come true for you, and now you can't be ungrateful to God, and that's why God tells us when He brings the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage, He says, "For I am the Lord thy God that brought you out of the land of Egypt." And he said, "Thou shalt have no other God before Me." And so we see that God demands our worship and our praise because of what He has done for us and continually doing for us. So let us all continue to give Him the praise, even when going through extreme heat. He is carrying us through a process because he wants to refine us as fine gold. Amen. And he wants to show us off before the Father. Because when you get to heaven, you say what? These are those that do what? Come out of what? Great, Great tribulation. tribulations. And, and they have washed their robe in the blood of the Lamb. And how can we go through great tribulation if we don't go through any crucibles? True. It's impossible. And like Ella Charles said, like Isaiah said, he said that when you pass through. So it is telling us that whenever we become a Christian, we are signed up for war. Yes, sir. We are signed up for a battle. And but one thing we rest assured that our commander is Jesus Christ. He has already overcome. And once we have him as a captain, then we'll be victorious. Amen. Okay, and we have this last point here. It says that we can summarize and we can we learn about God crucibles in three ways. First, God extreme heat is to destroy not us, but our sins. Second, God's extreme heat is not to make us miserable, but to make us pure, as we, as we were created to be. Third, God created us through all things, is constant and tender. He will never leave us alone, no matter what happened to us. So one thing we can assure, that whatever we are going through, or whatever we'll be going through, once we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we will never be alone. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for spending time with us. I want to wish you a pleasant week. And remember, next week's lesson is struggling with all energy. I hope we have a wonderful time.